студенти, където му е толкова в тези медицина, зад Windows, то е и физица. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation to participate in this very prestigious uh, Russian Dawn Conference that uh, we knew after some delay, some interruption, and uh, just uh, maintain and just exhibit the highest level ever reached uh, in national conferences. So I am um, going to give uh, really an ambitious task uh, to fulfill uh, this, and I am going to give a review uh, on uh, neutrino electromagnetic interactions. Uh, so this is the outline of my talk, so I will give some uh, general issues, rem reminders about electromagnetic properties in general, then we shall discuss uh, the existing constraints uh, from laboratory experiments as well as from astrophysics on the most important and between electromagnetic characteristics that are magnetic and uh, electric dipole moments, uh, charge radio, and even uh, the recharge uh, of neutrinos, then we shall discuss some interesting, from my point of view, uh, astrophysical applications of neutrino electromagnetic interactions. And finally, so one of the goal really is to attract your attention, experts in astroparticle and uh, cosmology. Uh, on some new threats that uh, are on, uh, uh, on the basis, uh, exist on the basis of neutrino and neutrino electromagnetic properties. And probably once uh, some of you uh, just uh, um, mentioned these <coughs> new threats, and probably uh, you will manage to find some applications in, in astrophysics. Uh, so I did, uh, this is not written, so just many years ago, I was sure that neutrino magnetic moment uh, open a window to new physics. But then later, uh, together with my friend Carl Jutti from Torino, they realized that really the whole neutrino electromagnetic interactions uh, can serve as a window to new physics. And this is the most complete, really, paper, or a review paper on uh, this issue published in uh, uh, 2015. There are some upgrades. So, uh, indeed, uh, why uh, it is often claimed that neutrino electromagnetic properties are important and open, uh, opens uh, a window to new physics, and how does this relate uh, to neutrino oscillations? Uh, the point is that, uh, uh, well, really, it's surprisingly that this issue, uh, the possibility to get an upper limit of neutrino magnetic moment, was raised even before the discovery of neutrino itself, as you remember, in uh, 1957, uh, 56. So, uh, and uh, this is really a real problem and puzzle. That just I should like to, to, take, to say the truth at the beginning, that in spite of reasonable reports, both from the theorists and the experimentalists, all results on terrestrial laboratory experiments on uh, research or search for magnetic a moment as well as other electromagnetic properties in general, as well as all data from astrophysics and cosmology are in agreement with zero between electromagnetic properties. But nevertheless, this issue is of interest because we know that neutrino is a massive particle. And if we just uh, calculate, even in the easy generalization of the Stettin model, we immediately get that magnetic moment for a direct neutrino is not zero, it is proportional to the mass of the uh, neutrino, and if you put some numbers here, you will get 3.2 10 to minus 19 ball magnetons. Yeah? So uh, indeed, uh, this value is uh, very far away from the present experimental uh, limits uh, from reactor neutrino fluxes 10 to minus 11. I will uh, speak about this in detail. Uh, this is a limit obtained by uh, the Russian experiment GEMMA in 2012. Also, uh, more or less at the same uh, uh, level, there are constraints from astrophysics um, obtained by Gorexin uh, and later by other experiments. So even uh, uh, neutrino can be merely charged particle. It is not completely excluded from theoretical point of view. And there are uh, many experiments that aim to set an upper bound on neutrino uh, merely charge. The most uh, severe bound, however, comes 
this is 3, 10 to minus 21 charge of electrons. Uh, the, the electron comes from the neutrality of the hydrogen electron, from the neutrality of the charge of the proton and the electron. And, um, and the most severe astrophysical bound I will speak about uh, later on uh, just is 1, 10 to minus 19 uh, charge of electron. So um, now I would like to re re remind you some general issues related to neutrino electromagnetic properties. So neutrino electromagnetic interactions are described by this so-called electromagnetic vertex function. So, and um, from some general principles like Lorentz covariance and electromagnetic gauge invariance, it is possible uh, to uh, derive uh, this uh, decomposition of the uh, vertex function in terms of four form factors that are the electric, dipole, magnetic and electric, and the anapole form factors. This is the most general expression that uh, is valid uh, for different fermions. So, if you go further and we, if you impose uh, constraints on hermeticity and uh, the behavior of the electromagnetic current and the discrete symmetry transformation, then we uh, could uh, specify these uh, form factors in the electromagnetic properties. And just here we uh, come to the conclusion that Dirac and Bayeran and Genus exhibit quite different electromagnetic properties. In particular, from CTP invariance plus hermeticity for Dirac neutrino, it follows that electric uh, the power form factors should be zero. For my run and neutrinos, three from four form factors should be zero. So uh, just a conclusion here is that we can use, in principle, the study of electromagnetic properties of neutrinos uh, to distinguish the nature of uh, neutrino, whether it's Dirac or my run factor. So, uh, if we go to some more general theoretical framework, it is possible to consider the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the vector, uh, the electromagnetic uh, current between different uh, neutrino mass states, and in this case, from factors as well as uh, vector function uh, are matrices in neutrino mass eigenspace space space. And again, Dirac and Mara and neutrino exhibit quite different electromagnetic properties. Well, uh, uh, just a few words about uh, more about uh, the theory of electromagnetic properties. Uh, so, uh, together with uh, uh, my colleague, uh, Maxim Gordon, who I here, many years ago, 20 years ago, I suppose, we uh, undertake the most general study of <coughs> neutrino, massive neutrino method function, including all electromagnetic uh, form factors uh, in the arbitrary uh, Maxwell gauge in the context of the easy generalization of the standard model and accounting for, for the first time, by the way, uh, for all masses of all particles, including uh, the masses of neutrinos. We calculate one loop contribution to this kind of diagram in these papers, and uh, just there are numerous uh, diagrams, and he, uh, as one of the outcomes, we can now uh, study the exact uh, dependence on the magnetic moment, in particular on the mass of neutrino. And we, uh, oh, sorry. And uh, we just uh, get these analytical expressions uh, for uh, magnetic moments of neutrinos for different uh, masses of neutrinos, the light neutrino, intermediate uh, mass <coughs> neutrino, and very heavy neutrino. So, and all these uh, expressions exhibit the, the proportionality of magnetic moment to the mass of uh, neutrino. Well, uh, it is possible also to include the effect of mixing between uh, mass states of neutrinos, and here are expressions for uh, magnetic and electric uh, moments, diagonal and off-diagonal, uh, accounting for mixing, and uh, again, this is a, a very particular proportionality to the mass of the mass states of neutrinos. And from a unitarity of uh, mixing matrix, it just throws forward, that the off-diagonal uh, uh, magnetic and electric moments are suppressed due to natural impulse Miami cancellation uh, mechanism. So uh, that's why, by the way, why neutrino radiative decay that was discussed in one of the plenary sessions yesterday is a very, very slow uh, process. And again, if you just put numbers here for all for a transition of diagonal magnetic and electric dipole moments, we get instead of the diagonal 10 to minus 19, we get 10 to minus 23. So it is really strongly suppressed even to the tiny uh, 
the value of the diagonal of this one. So, uh, well, this is a really uh, a, a big problem. Uh, uh, and uh, so the theorists uh, are trying to, uh, to find uh, generalization of uh, the theory, which uh, will probably lead the value of magnetic moment to more or less closer to the level of the present experimental constraints. But there are some general limitations. So let's suppose that there are some new physics on the scale lambda, and this new physics uh, by this diagram contributed, uh, brings an additional contribution to the magnetic moment in general that, by just calculating this diagram, is inverse proportional to this lambda. So the same diagram, th this one, just also leaves the mass. And the calculation shows that the mass, addition uh, contribution to the mass, is proportional to lambda. Combining these two, we get that there is a relation between the shift of the mass and the uh, additional contribution to the magnetic moment. And if we manage once, or in some theoretical framework, lift the value of uh, magnetic moment more or less uh, to the level of, uh, exceeding the level of the prediction of the standard model, we immediately get an acceptable big contribution to the mass. So, and this is a big problem uh, for people who are trying to, um, to generalize the theory and with having in mind just that probably the magnetic moment of neutrinos <coughs> will be also lifted to some reasonable uh, for experimental observation level. But there are many, uh, there are some theories uh, that enable uh, to just to avoid this contradiction between the, the big prediction to the big magnetic moment and big uh, shift to mass, recent left and right symmetric models uh, provide additional term that is not proportional, not only proportional to the mass of neutrino, but also proportional to the charge of mass. So this is one of the way out, and there are different uh, uh, theoretical frameworks that also just uh, 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 rule out this uh, relation between the, uh, the mass and the magnetic moment. So now I would like to go to neutrino charge and charge uh, radius or an upper moment. So, um, in fact, uh, in the standard model, uh, we, we know that neutrino is a, a neutral particle. This comes from the, uh, from, uh, the gauge invariance and anomaly cancellation constraints. There is a general proof in the standard model without right handed neutrinos. Uh, so, the general anomaly uh, uh, cancellation constraints, um, uh, the uh, hypercharges, so uh, that they are quantized. And solving this uh, relation, uh, the, the, the electric charge is also quantized and from experimental values for the charges of other particles we immediately get that in this case the charge should be zero. But uh, the strict requirements of charge quantization may disappear if we add right hand continues with non zero have a charge and then have a charge dequantized and uh, uh, consequently uh, the electric charge gets dequantized and there is room for mini charge particles. So uh, there are Theories beyond the standard model where it is possible to, to see and to, to have uh, many charge uh, neutrinos, and there are a lot of efforts from theoretical uh, experimental, uh, experimentalists to constrain uh, the many charges of neutrinos. So, uh, also, if, even uh, if uh, a neutrino is um, supposed to be electrically neutral, uh, it can be characterized by another very important electromagnetic characteristic. It can be uh, just be a, a superposition of two um, um, uh, differently charged distributions. And now we just come to this uh, very important characteristic charge radius. Uh, that is uh, squared, really. That is uh, proportional to the, sec to the derivative of the uh, electric uh, factor over Q squared to zero. So uh, there is um, uh, some um, not correct claim in some uh, papers um, that uh, there is a, 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 um, that the charge uh, radius is just uh, for the instead of model for masters and fields is just proportional to the anapole moment. But to be correct, uh, the fact is that really uh, charge radius and anapole moment enters together in the uh, scattered experiment, and you can distinguish which, whether it's a contribution of the charge radius or, or, or the um, uh, anapole moment. So it means they cannot be uh, uh, tested in the experiment separately. So uh, I just skip this. Uh, about uh, experimental constraints, 
the magnetic moment is the most reasonable and the most uh, well expect, uh, accepted among the electromagnetic properties of neutrinos. And uh, uh, the studies of neutrino electron scattering is one of the most uh, sensitive methods uh, to, uh, for the uh, investigation of uh, neutrino magnetic moment. The cross section uh, contains uh, two terms. The standard model is proportional to the Fermi coupling squared plus the electromagnetic part that is proportional to the effect of magnetic moment. And just comparing these two in the studies of uh, experimental uh, results, it is possible to get uh, the limit, uh, because nothing is seen, um, uh, on the magnetic effect of magnetic moment. Just here, um, the, the behavior of these two terms, this is black, nearly flat line stands for the standard model contribution and this is uh, the colored line uh, stands for the magnetic moment contribution that is proportional to the effect of magnetic moment square so 3, 4, 5, 10 to minus um, 11 bore magnetrons and from this uh, uh, here uh, the cross section and this is the recalled energy they were measured in the experiment and from here it is uh, just straightforward that the lower the smallest measure electronic recall energy is the smallest value for magnetic moment can be formed in this in such kind of experiment. So, and uh, the best uh, uh, limit uh, uh, the, the, the use of uh, the reactor neutrino, the anti neutrinos, uh, come uh, from the Kalinian uh, experiment from Kalinian nuclear power plant, GEM experiment, and since 2012, uh, this is the report uh, limit, upper limit for effective magnetic moment, 2.9 10 to minus 11 bore magnetrons. This is the best uh, limit um, obtained by this GEM experiment using the reactor neutrinos. So now uh, the second uh, stage, GEM2, or now the, the title is New GEM Experiment, is um, running. And one of the goals, one of the goals is uh, to lift or just to lower the sensitivity to magnetic moment and order of magnitude to 5, 10, uh, 5 or 9, 10 to minus 12 bore magnetrons. Well, and um, we hope that very soon, uh, or in a year or something like this, or maybe two years, this uh, level will be reached. So they may probably, or, or they will discover. Or, or, uh, so it was a, a rather tricky situation in 2010, before the Nutrina conference in Athens. Their computers to Gemma, the Chinese uh, Taiwan experiment Exona, just announced the report up above. Uh, on the neutrino magnetic moment. This is the same type of experiment like GEMMA, uh, but they make uh, not correct theoretical preparations. They just stated that uh, due to the fact that uh, uh, electrons are bound in a target, uh, in an atom, so, and they calculate this effect and just get that these many orders, two or three orders of magnitude increase of electromagnetic contribution uh, to the cross section. And they just announced in this uh, uh, very prestigious uh, journal, PRN, a new bound that can get was much better than uh, the bound of Gemma. However, and they just announced this result in the Geneva conference uh, in, Ath in, uh, in Athens. But in our papers, we just uh, uh, have shown that uh, they were just uh, obviously wrong in their calculations, that a free electron approximation is just quite valid for this. And so in such case, we just uh, managed to confirmed that GEMMA is the best result for, um, uh, in uh, studying the magnetic moments uh, of neutrinos in the reactor experiment. So there is another possibility to uh, investigate the magnetic properties of neutrinos uh, for, for this, uh, using the solid neutrino fluxes and boroxina um, and just uh, get this uh, value 2.9, 10 to minus 11 bore magnetrons. And this is very close, but I would like to uh, um, point here that uh, in, indeed uh, uh, what is measured in different uh, kinds of experiments depending on the distance from uh, the source to the detector is an effective value that depends on the flavor composition uh, of uh, the flux in the detector and also depends on the uh, L distance uh, uh, that travels from the source and um, observ observable uh, Magnetic moment is an effective parameter that depends on the genome flavor composition detector that I just mentioned. And implications of 
um, uh, neutrino limits from different experiments like gem reactor experiment or solar are in general different. So um, the comprehensive and quite complete analysis of uh, neutrino electron spectrum counting for mixing and installations can be found in this our paper. Um, and um, <coughs> we have just shown uh, directly that uh, in short Bison experiment like Get Gemma um, and in the long Bison experiment like Arucina, quite different compositions, uh, effective magnetic moments are tested or measured. So just um, it is possible to use uh, the Gemma result um, to also to constrain the melee charge of neutrino. So I have added here uh, the third unobserved, by the way, uh, contribution to the cross section of. Uh, on electrons, uh, and then just uh, use this to, uh, with the, the, for the date of uh, Gemma and obtain uh, the limit uh, on the millicharge of neutrino of level 1.5, 10 to the minus per uh, volt charge of electron. This is the best uh, reacting neutrino limit, and it's included for, for the table of neutrino properties by particle data group since 2016. And uh, it is also predicted in this paper that. Uh, with a new edition of uh, Gemma, Gemma 2 again, when they, as they announced, will reach the level of sensitivity to magnetic moment to the 10 to minus 12, they, it will be possible to constrain the charge of neutrino to the level of 10 to uh, minus 13 charge of electron. So, uh, about charge right there. Uh, so, in this particular paper, we have uh, also uh, make a statement that uh, there is uh, uh, the charge radius uh, of uh, in the elastic spectrum uh, cannot be considered as it was uh, discussed before in uh, this paper as a shift just uh, just only as a shift of the vector coupling but there are also another contributions uh, that uh, um, can be uh, called uh, the charge radio contribution for flavor transition charge radio. And this idea was um, was used uh, within this Chinese, Italian, and Russian collaboration, and we just analyzed the coherent experimental data and uh, put for the first time uh, the bounds on the charge radio, included the first uh, bounds on the transition charge radio. They are shown here, and surprisingly, that uh, these uh, results were uh, highlighted by uh, the editors of the Fizer FD uh, as one of the important results of published in the journal in 2018. So uh, now I would like to say a few words about electromagnetic neutrinos in astrophysics and bounds uh, on uh, main uh, characteristics from uh, different processes. So, uh, here, the cartoon uh, illustrating the most important neutrino electromagnetic interactions that are due to neutrino neutrino electron volts. First of all, there is a decay of a heavy neutrino to a light neutrino that is missing from the photon. The same diagram describes the chain of radiation of neutrino if uh, its process is perceived in a plasma and the speed light of neutrino. This is a new phenomenon that we have proposed and studied, and I will just comment uh, in some details. Uh, this is another process, the plasma decay to neutrino anti neutrino pair. This is the most important from astrophysical application because just incorporation of this process to the cooling or energy stars provides the best astrophysical bound on neutrino uh, magnetic form. This is scattering of neutrino, and this is uh, the, the neutrino spin or spin of flavor installation on external electromagnetic fields and also on, uh, on uh, matter. And this is also a new effect that uh, we have discussed and studied. So, <coughs> neutrino radiative decay uh, just uh, uh, comes to, and uh, this process um, can be constrained from the absence of decay photons uh, with uh, using the reactive neutrinos, so solar neutrinos, supernova neutrinos, etc. So, uh, the chain of radiation. So uh, this process proceeds if uh, the index of refraction of the environment matter is not trivial, and uh, there is an, an estimation that, for instance, for solar neutrinos with magnetic moment 3.10 to minus 11.5 neutrons, about five uh, photons uh, will appear per day 
in the water detector, one cubic kilometer detector. Yeah? So it can be thought to be in terms of. So there is uh, a related decay and sharing of uh, radiation in different external environments. And what is important here that uh, this channel of radiation can, uh, uh, can appear even in the standard model without any need for the mass of neutrino or just uh, theory beyond the standard model. For in, uh, in the presence of magnetic field, uh, due to uh, this, uh, uh, the magnetic field induces the, uh, oh, what that means? Have you another device? I'm sorry. No? Okay, sure. So, uh, just uh, in the presence of magnetic field, uh, just uh, uh, induce, uh, induce the new interaction of neutrinos with photon, and uh, uh, this, uh, there is no need for some theory beyond the physics beyond the standard model. Also, as it was shown for the first time uh, by Arayevsky, Simikosis, Maradinsky in 1986, uh, neutrino in matter can acquire a <coughs> charge. And uh, this, again, can be a source of cherry foundation. So um, uh, now uh, uh, this is a new mechanism of uh, electromagnetic radiation that we just proposed and studied in detail with my colleagues. Um, and we just call this a spin light and neutrino. So neutrino with non-trivial magnetic uh, uh, moment moving in a media can emit light. And first we just developed the quasi-classical uh, theory of this spin light and neutrino that was based on the quasi-classical uh, um, uh, equation for the neutrino spin evolution in external electromagnetic fields and environments. So, and uh, this is one of the, our last papers, uh, recent papers published in uh, 2017, where they just examined spin light of neutrino in different astrophysical environments. Of course, uh, uh, the process is very, very slow, and it's very hard to imagine where it's possible to see in astrophysics, but nevertheless, we have found uh, the environment of gamma ray bursts where this process can uh, thought to be reasonable. So the spin light of Mutina plus a classical theory, it was proposed together with uh, this paper, uh, with Andrea uh, Labana. And um, I just used this, uh, introduced this uh, name uh, using the analogy between the classical electrodynamics where the object is zero charge, electric charge, but no zero magnetic moment, um, emits light. This magnetic dipole radiation power is proportional to the second derivative of the magnetic moment squared. So the same uh, nature is here. So there is a um, evolution of the magnetic moment, uh, but of course the, pro the, the, the process is quantum by its nature, but nevertheless we start with a um, uh, uh, classical theory, and we use this quasi-classical theory of neutrino spin evolution in a magnetic field, this magnetic moment and uh, magnetic field, and we added here the, uh, the term that uh, uh, accounts for big interaction of neutrinos, uh, this is uh, guy J is inverse proportional to magnetic moment. So there is no magnetic moment here, no magnetic field. So, and um, together again with Maxim, uh, we uh, in this paper uh, uh, examined the spin evolution uh, of neutrino in presence of general external fields. We just uh, uh, account for possibility for scalar, pseudo scalar, vector, etc. Uh, external fields and derive relativistic quasi classical equation from the field spin evolution. And from this, we just try forward that only electromagnetic and weak interaction uh, can uh, uh, contribute to spin evolution. So, uh, spin light of neutrino is uh, really a quantum uh, uh, phenomena, and we use uh, and just uh, uh, use the method uh, well established in electrodynamics, uh, the so called method of the solutions of fire representation of the part of electrodynamics. Uh, for instance, uh, it was applied and developed for, uh, for the theory, uh, uh, for the quantum theory of cyclotron radiation, the ini initial or final electrons are considered here, described as the exact solutions uh, for this uh, wave function, for the, uh, the Dirac equation with the uh, magnetic moment here. And um, we, uh, we, I can just generalize this approach to all neutrinos, uh, for neutrinos in external electromagnetic fields and then to the neutrino in dense matter. And uh, just uh, we developed this, uh, uh, this quantum uh, method uh, for, for describing neutrino states in dense matter, first for the 
developing the quantum theory of spin line, and then we also discovered a very important, uh, very interesting, but tiny, of course, effect. Uh, in fact, there is energy quantization of uh, Eugene energy quantization in a rotating medium. So um, this is few uh, transparencies for. Um, slides for neutrino uh, quantum theory of spin light uh, neutrino. This is the okay, thank you. Uh, this is um, uh, the Dirac equation uh, uh, F uh, describes the, the presence of matter. Uh, it, it's, uh, it, it contains matter current and matter polarization, and it is possible to solve uh, this equation to find the energies and those wave functions and just calculate the rates and power and uh, also it's possible to, to see that there is a uh, very uh, strong beaming effect and um, also the, the, uh, there is a proof that there is a question whether it's possible to have uh, the uh, characteristic time of this process uh, reasonable uh, to the age of the universe well, and uh, the answer is yes this particular choice of parameters, this is the energy of routines, this magnetic moment, this is a density of environment, uh, this uh, characteristic time is something 10 to minus 8 seconds. Of course, uh, this is like as measures of uh, order of magnitude, but we hope that probably once this uh, phenomenon can be thought to be observed in some astrophysical environments, and this paper was devoted to these discussions, and we have found that uh, the uh, short gamma reverse that provide the environment where it's possible to think. Uh, I'm sorry that it's not possible to see even for me what is written here, but uh, please believe uh, that you can see this paper and the previous one. Uh, well, uh, and we have uh, proposed that probably in these environments, we can use the model uh, of uh, this uh, paper for this uh, object here, yeah? and we just predict that uh, the rate and the power of this speed light is reasonable. So uh, now about uh, uh, astrophysical bounds of magnetic moment, I just announced already that uh, this, by the way, Raffet in 1990 just proposed that the plasma decay in the anti repair, repair uh, could uh, sufficiently change uh, the rate of pulling or at stars, and just in order to avoid uh, uh, the contradiction with observable data, he put a limit. As this is a really the best of the physical limit of magnetic moment, 3, 10 to minus 12 uh, uh, bar magnetons. Now, uh, during the last two, three years, there are some improvements, but uh, the level is the same. It's about 1.2, 10 to minus 12 bar magnetons. So, uh, what is very important for a physical uh, uh, application uh, in, uh, uh, due to non trivial electromagnetic properties, in particular magnetic moment, uh, they could uh, uh, the right-handed routine can appear, and there are different possibilities. First, the helicity change um, can be in neutrino magnetic uh, moment scattering on electrons, the neutrons, or protons. So, active uh, like uh, left-handed routines can be converted to the sterile right-handed routines, and of course, the this effect could contribute to uh, different uh, uh, processes in astrophysics, and also just incorporating this effect. It is possible to get constraints on the effective magnetic moment. So there is spin spin flavor precession in the transversal magnetic field. Again, um, uh, left to right conversion uh, can be stimulated. And also there is another possibility that was proposed in my paper and studied uh, recently in a uh, series of our papers. There is spin spin flavor uh, precession and oscillations um, in a uh, case when you are propagating in moving matter where the uh, transversal <coughs> current with respect to the position is zero or there is a uh, transversal polarization of matter. So uh, just the supernova uh, neutrinos uh, experimental data provides the energy loss limit on uh, magnetic moment of uh, neutrino related to observed duration of uh, signal. And this limit uh, here is again 10 to minus uh, 12 bar magnetons. So another reasoning, again, again with using this supernova routine, provides energy loss limit uh, on the magnetic moment of routine related to observed routine energies. Again, here we can see, again, the limit is 10 to minus 12. So uh, the experimental uh, astrophysical limits are more or less on the level of 10 to minus 10. That depends what kind of mechanism is, uh, is, um, is using. So about, uh, again, about uh, the charge routine, again, 
The same process of plasma decay to routine antigen to repair also put a limit on a, a millichargeable retina, and there are another uh, limits, uh, 3, 10 to minus four, uh, uh, 17, from absence of anomalous semi independent dispersion, again, the supernormal genus. Uh, well, uh, and uh, now I would like to, uh, uh, thank you. Um, I'm just uh, supposed to be in time, yeah, thank you. So uh, I would like to speak about the most severe astrophysical bound in the charge genome. So uh, th this effect is uh, based on uh, the, uh, the um, uh, fact that neutrino energy is quantized uh, in a rotating magnetized uh, matter. So uh, we uh, just consider neutrino wave function uh, and just solve this uh, equation. This is a magnetic moment interaction of neutrino with external uh, magnetic field. And this, the, the second term in this uh, equation is uh, uh, describing the matter. And we suppose that uh, matter uh, is uh, rotating and there is a nexus uh, along the magnetic field is orientated and there is a rotation of media uh, around this axis and it's possible to solve this equation exactly and we have found that the energy of neutrinos in this case is quantized and is an integer number not only because uh, of uh, charge, uh, middle charge uh, interaction with magnetic field this is like uh, the famous Landau levels for electrons in a, in, a, in a magnetic field. But also there is another term here that is also quantized, depends on the integer number. This is Fermi company, this is the number density of, of particles with supposed neutrons, and this is metal rotation frequency. So if you switch off uh, magnetic field, um, there will be uh, energy condensation due, due to weak interaction of neutrinos with the rotating medium. So uh, in quasi classical uh, treatment, uh, this um, uh, these uh, quantum states in rotating matter uh, can be uh, described as the motion of circular orbits with this uh, radius and also I have introduced a generalization of the effect of Lorentz force uh, and there is uh, an additional to electromagnetic part there is a matter part that uh, just can be described as the interaction of neutrinos with a quasi-electric field that is uh, uh, proportional to the uh, gradient of density of matter and this is quasi-magnetic field that is proportional to the rotation of matter. So, uh, and uh, just uh, we make like a toy estimation uh, we just consider uh, the case when this radius of uh, neutrinos trapped inside the rotating media is less than the radius of the neutron star. So we suppose we just use this particular choice of parameters and we have found that really this uh, R is less than 10 uh, kilometers for a tiny energy of neutrinos of power of 1 AU, so, or so. So uh, the, our prediction is that uh, rotating uh, stars can be served like the filters for these low energy neutrinos. So about uh, the um, uh, limit, um, uh, astrophysical limit of neutrino mill charge. So we consider the uh, neutrino propagating in rotating star and just introduce a kind of star rotation, uh, rotation agent the point is that neutrino um, using many charge neutrino using a rotating star is uh, escaping star not perpendicular to the surface but with some inclination and it is possible to calculate uh, the shift of, of the uh, rotation frequency due to this mechanism and we call this mechanism neutrino star turning mechanism but the escaping many charge neutrinos when they are moving the uh, curved orbits inside a rotating uh, magnetized star um, just should affect initial star rotation and just uh, uh, having very, very conservative um, uh, criteria that this shift of the frequency is less than the observed uh, frequency of pulsars, we get that in this case the mini charge of the tina could not exceed uh, 1.3 10 to minus 19. Uh, this is the best as a physical bound on the tina uh, mini charge. It's two orders of bigger than the the records uh, limit 10 to minus 21 from uh, neutrality of uh, hydrogen atom. So now uh, I would like to two last minutes, or oh, even one, okay. Um, I would like to recall the main steps in neutrino uh, oscillation, starting from the prediction of Pantecorma, and I would like to flash your attention to um, neutrino left to right mixing uh, uh, oscillations in the transversal magnetic field. Um, and um, also this effect can be uh, resonantly increased like the Wolfenstein, Michael's Menor-Wolfenstein effect due to the presence of matter. 
and uh, here are this, uh, uh, the probability of mutinous uh, left to right spin oscillations in a transversal magnetic field, uh, twisting magnetic field. So, and the, the resonance condition is just also written here. So, uh, just uh, in our uh, quite uh, uh, old paper, we just investigated in the oscillations in magnetic field of the sun, supernova, and if it starts, and put in the effect of twisting. And um, we just, uh, just, uh, just missed there. And just two weeks ago, the resonance uh, um, amplification of uh, uh, continuous spin uh, oscillations in twisted magnetic fields uh, were uh, considered, and it, it was shown that uh, the hyper K uh, will be sensitive uh, to this effect once we um, uh, detect supernova neutrinos if magnetic moment is 10 to minus 13. So, um, I would like to announce this effect uh, that was proposed in this my paper uh, that uh, the, uh, there is a possibility to have transition to the left and right neutrinos without any need for the non zero magnetic moment or magnetic field. And just in this paper, the conclusion uh, one reads that the possible measurements of routine spin oscillations, for example, from routine left to right, owing to routine interaction with matter, under the condition that they exist on zero transverse current component of matter polarization, is the most important new effect that follows from the investigation of this paper. So far, it has been assumed that routine spin oscillations may, uh, may appear only in the case when there exists a non zero. Um, transverse magnetic field in a general spray. Well, and just there is a, uh, the probability of these installations and the amplitude uh, that is determined by this E is not zero when there is a transversal matter current. If you just switch off magnetic moment to magnetic field, still E is not zero if there is uh, weak interaction with genus with a transversal matter current. And this effect was confirmed in this series of paper when people uh, examine propagation of routine in some astrophysical environments. So uh, I just keep with this and if just uh, there is 15 seconds, uh, I suppose it is possible to ask the chairman. I would like to um, uh, also announce that there is a very no trivial communication between neutrino um, uh, flavor and spin and spin flavor solutions. Just before, these two, two phenomena were considered separately, but in our paper, uh, we just investigate uh, this uh, and uh, just have found, for instance, uh, that um, neutrino spin oscillation amplitude um, is modulated by the vacuum frequency and uh, neutrino flavor oscillation <coughs> amplitude is modulated by the magnetic moment uh, uh, and uh, magnetic moment frequency. So, uh, so I think that I just come to my conclusions. Uh, this is a summary of all known uh, from theoretic point of view and experimental point of bounds that can be found in our papers. Uh, there are some future prospects. I have also announced that uh, there are some new uh, bounds, uh, but they are more or less on magnetic moment on the level 10 to minus 12. And uh, if you remember the day before, uh, my colleague Kuzakov just announced a new experiment that is now running, uh, preparing in Sarov, uh, with the aim to lift, to just to down, uh, to lower the upper mountain in magnetic mountain to the level of 7, 10 to minus 13, this uh, um, um, Saturn experiment. This is uh, Saturn experiment. Well, thank you. We have time for two short questions. Okay, go. Okay. Uh, I want my mic. Uh, thank you very much for a very interesting talk. I, I have a question about neutrino mass. So, connection uh, this magnetic moment and see some model. How is the model uh, connected with the ore or survive? But, uh, you, you show a different approach to neutrino mass. Okay, my question about the source, how to explain non-zero neutrino mass, does it have this? Sorry? How to explain non-zero neutrino mass, how to obtain? Uh, what are different mechanisms you just mentioned? Yeah? Okay. 
Okay, let's do this picture again. Okay.